Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of the Real Housewives of um, Orange County. And this is season 18, and this is episode 17, the season finale, which I'm super sad about, and is called um, Unfinished Business. And one thing I will state real quick is the season has been amazing. Um, this season finale to me was a pretty solid season finale. Um, it wasn't by far the best episode though, which normally, you know, your season finale ends with the bang, but it did still leave me wanting more. And so this has been a very, very good season. Also, the other thing I will mention is I am slightly irritated right now because I recorded this already, this whole entire review already. Somehow, some way, my um, file when I went to upload on YouTube got completely corrupted. Not exactly sure how. And um, yeah, I had to redo it. And it's kind of frustrating because I actually did this on Thursday the day of the show. So it's coming in a little late, but that's okay. This is probably, this is one of the good news is about having um, so many Real Housewife shows um, coming up. And then also too, another content alert before we get into this review is that I am also going to be having um, the, um, um, I'm going to be doing a brief review of the reunion looks, um, and that will probably be posted on, I want to say Tuesday, because we know I'm dropping the Real Housewives of New York as what I'm reviewing. Um, and I, I mentioned that in my re um, review for the Real Housewives of New York. So that will be another thing that we do. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the um, season finale starts where the ladies are now back from London. They're back in Orange County. And um, we start off with Emily um, deciding to bring the girls, some of the girls together. And um, that includes Gina, Angie, sorry, Gina, um, Jen, and later on Shannon does join them for axe throwing. And... Um, First of all, Gina and um, Emily are first talking about um, how the trip left off where Shannon just left um, after um, pretty much after her trip was completely ruined by Tamra. She left early on the flight, first flight home and um, just let, let, left the ladies. So they did not come back together. Um, but then as Gina shows up, Gina has a major surprise. Emily already knew about it. And it turns out that uh, Jen is engaged. Yeah, to Ryan nonetheless. And so we know what this episode's going to be all about. And um, sh sh her ring is huge, number one. Number two, uh, one other thing that happened was, so apparently after Jen left um london she went directly to the bahamas um and i guess her and her family do a family vacation in the bahamas with ryan and then that's where it happened we actually got to see the footage of this and then after that then shannon does show up and she is ready to let some aggression out and um shannon does look like she's in great spirits in this particular scene she's ready to just like throw some axes being silly and um it looked like a very very fun event and i've actually never went axe throwing i kind of want to know your opinions on that um but anyway um jen does tell shannon what's going on because i mean it's pretty obvious because the ring is huge and the ladies are all pretty much happy for jen they just are not necessarily i mean they still all all of them are still sighing ryan that's that's always been a thing but they do express their happiness for jen and we find out that um, she's going to have a br ugly bridesmaid dress party. And Alexis is going to be the one who's throwing it. Um, that part's not mentioned. We do just find out when they show a scene of Jen and Katie with Alexis. And that's what's happening. I was actually kind of surprised that they're doing it this way. But I think this is a producer's like idea because... 
honestly feels to me if you kick me out of my house like i've you know if you kick me out of your house the way um alexis kicked katie and jen out oh no no no, that would have been it there will, there will be no, no talking there will be no, none of that because we never did see apology or anything for that so that's that's interesting but anyway um so that's where we find that out and then also jen does talk to shannon and she's like okay Tamara's is invited to the party, but I don't necessarily want to talk to her before the party because it turns out they were supposed to meet up and kind of clear the air before the party. And Jen's like, I'm not really ready to do that. And we also kind of find out in this season finale, Jen's not only not ready to do that, she's not interested in really ever doing that. She's kind of over the Tamara situation because she knows who Tamara is now, finally, that this, this is going to be a useless conversation so there's really no point and anyway and so um from there that's kind of where the scene ends so then we kind of do also then have this short scene where um alexis goes to meet tamra at her place and they kind of recap how things have been going um we find out that um and I don't really care about this. And by the way, um, my reaction, my original review for this, <laughs> but honey, I was, oh man, I was being such a, a jerk when it came to the whole um, Alexis and John situation. So um, for those who are new to the channel, um, I try to skip through those things when it has anything to do with them because... <sighs> John has the immediate goal to have multiple confessions this season, and he's has two of them this um, particular episode. And this ep this thing is included in her, and then both having a confessional because she cannot just have a confessional by herself. She wants to have it with him, and it's like, ill, gross. So anyway, we find out that um, they're ring shopping, but then this is when Alexis mentions, yeah, no, actually, Jen is actually engaged right now. Did you see the ring? Like talking to um, Tamara about it. And Tamara's like, no, I haven't seen the ring yet, but I did congratulate her via, um, I think, DM or something like that or text. And so she's like, yeah, um, I'm actually throwing her a party. And that's where we kind of go into the details of the party. And um, yeah, Alexis, it's Alexis project that she's going to be doing and really her event. So um, they, you know, I guess they had to give her an event, um, even though she's just a friend of um, maybe they thought they'll give her an event just in case for whatever reason they decide to make her full time and hopefully uh no no um this can be the last season with alexis just just fyi but that is kind of where it ends um with them two talking about that and then that's it side note tamra is still blaming shannon for the reason why um jen and um Ta and her are not getting along and we know that's a, a lie i kind of just wanted to breeze through that just because like we we know that's not true but anyway from there we do have like a short uh, montage but it also helps wrap up people's like kind of you know story for the season we see jen with her son dawson we find out dawson did not move out after that talk that hard talk that we saw him have basically kind of being a spoiled brat um and apparently she did loosen the rings on him because she's like at the end of the day he's pretty much almost 18 and because clearly it's his senior year so after this there's really nothing she's gonna be able to really do like i mean other than maybe kick him out but she doesn't want to necessarily do that but it turns out he decides that he he doesn't love school but he's being very transparent with his mom which is very important and very that's better than what he was doing right you know sneaking around and so he's like yeah i think i'm gonna join the marines now I hate to be that person, but that's the part where I'm a little confused how that's going to work because the Marines out of like the military branches, Army's the easiest one to get in. I see him being able to do that. Um, the Marines, you do have to have, you do have to grade a little bit higher in the Marines. It's a little bit more difficult to get into. So 
if he doesn't necessarily have the discipline to want to do school like that for real, for real, him getting to Marines is going to be a taller task. But if he's someone who can do it, hey, go for it. Jen is concerned that he wants to do that. That's the path he wants to do. But she at least is proud of him for actually having some type of sense of direction finally. So there's that. Um, and then we see that um, in another scene, um, Heather is actually talking to her son, Nikki. And Nikki's also kind of having similar sentiments that he doesn't like school. But he, this is, um, I guess, Nikki's like first year in college or whatever. But at the end of the day, Nikki's successful. So even though he doesn't like school, he's actually having a good time in college. And he also did um, get his real estate license and already sold some homes. And then we find out at the very, very end of the episode, well, close to the end of the episode where we have the, you know, ladies kind of um, giving us a recap of um, what's going on now that Nikki actually, um, I guess, broke a record of like the highest um, real estate sell in Long Beach. So yeah, no, he's doing very, very well for himself. And he's also planning on studying abroad soon. So even though he doesn't like school, he thugged it out and he is living his best life. And then next we see that Tamara is with Sophia and Sophia, unbeknownst to us, is extremely um, artsy. We kind of could tell by the way, you know, personality wise, it kind of seems like she's an artsy girl. But when I say she's artsy, she has a voice on her. She produces her own music. And so we're listening a little bit to her music and she's like, you know, basically editing it and putting it together. And so Tamara's like, yeah, you should, you know, go to school for music. You should really, really do that. And so um, we also find out the end when it comes to Tamara wrapping up her story is that that is what her daughter Sophia is going to be ending up doing, going to school, going to a musical arts school to really kind of get that ground running and do that. And then from there, then we go over to Katie. And with Katie, we see that she is with her daughter and her family and Callie finally did get in the mail her official last name change and now she does have matt's last name so that story comes full circle we also um find that so that's pretty much all that happens there and matt is just over the moon happy and he's like yes now i could call you that's my now he could say that's my girl like officially like it feels a lot more official now and then last but not least, we see Gina with Travis and clearly Travis was, you know, sitting in the house, watching over the house while she was gone in London on the girls trip. And they talk about the relationship some more. And I actually have turned a corner when it comes to Gina and Travis. And this is why. So I apparently maybe part of the reason why I just never saw them two as being like really compatible like that was maybe because all the tension that they have had when it comes to the ex-wife situation. It seems like they just always been in very tense, but not really happily together for real, for real. And also too, because of that situation, and not really talking about the situation. There just always seems something off with them. This season now, they're being way more transparent about it. This is kind of the first time I'm seeing, oh, okay, okay. And I never thought I would change my opinion when it comes to Gina. But like this season has made me really, really like Gina. And I kind of want to see her around next season. Um, and see how this plays out. And hopefully... You know, they finally can get the ending they're looking for. But at the beginning, when she was like explaining the story at the beginning of the season about why they decide to separate, we could tell she wasn't really telling the whole story. And she kind of told a little bit of like this thing where she was like, we need more space. But then now that she's actually explaining what it really is, it's like, oh, okay, this is great. Like, I, I understand this. And one thing also that I 
makes me want to change turn a corner with gina is she's finally in the words of b brooke ashley she's finally gonna go see the lady aka she's going to go to a therapist with travis and they're going to try to work through this because travis did state something that gina does is not really just with the relationship but just in general we see it even on the show when she's arguing she runs away and he's like you need to actually confront things and deal with it and not always run away and she's like you know what you are right um i do think what we she does still stand by the decision that she made that they need to separate and i actually agree with her because both of them even though travis is not happy about the decision when it comes to their relationship on the screen it does translate that they are much lighter and actually happier and maybe travis is happy because gina's happy but it does seem like there are at least in this scene it looked like they were happier maybe i'm reading too much into this one scene but i did like what i saw here and this kind of wraps up their whole thing okay next the rest of this for the most part until like i guess maybe the last 10 minutes of the show is really going to be all about jen's engagement party and everything that transpires there um we see that vicky and shannon um, they're getting ready for the engagement party and they're going to be going there together. Um, and then we see that Jen and Ryan are getting things prepared or ready to go and she's getting all glammed up. Um, we also then see that um, Emily is um getting ready with shane and this was actually kind of a little bit cute so emily is actually wearing her wedding dress as her bridesmaid dress but like they got married i think like i don't know it seems like they got married like in the 90s or whatever and so it is is a it's not it, it's the the dress did not age well um for it to be a wedding dress but it actually looks great for like a bridesmaid dress and also too because it's a tacky's bridesmaids dress party as a bridesmaid you're not supposed to be wearing a white dress well unless of course it calls for that but you're not supposed to do that so that actually that is tacky in itself so it actually works that she's literally wearing a wedding dress a bridesmaid dress it works and also i was very impressed and emily i hope you see this when people are giving you your flowers um you worked hard on your body and you look amazing and i hopefully you do believe that one day um i feel like you believe it or starting to believe it and be mindful that it takes your mind longer to realize what your body looks like um it, it's just a thing especially if you're someone who has had any type of body dysmorphia weight issues up or down it's a total thing i'm the same way it usually takes me maybe six months after the changes have happened for me to actually truly grasp that i look different looking in the mirror and i just hopefully you know that but i the reason why i'm saying this is the fact that you can wear your wedding dress and it fit like a glove it probably actually kind of looked better on you now than it did when you were a bride originally chef's kiss you did that anyway also too then um the, the ladies all do end up going to the party one by one and so um those are the people that are showing up not necessarily in that order um katie and matt show up joe who's from a previous season showed up um and alexis invited joe and they're one by one um coming to the party um and then shortly after people are at the party we see that tamra tries to go on her apology tour and apologize to gina and gina she accepts it in her face but she's not really buying it she doesn't want the smoke like that kind of smoke that she had um that jen is basically giving tamra so she's not going all in on not buying it but like in her confessional tam um in her confessional gina's basically saying like yeah no i i know who she is and her speech and everything that she even just gave to me is very narcissistic so like i'm not i'm not really buying it but i'm gonna accept it because apparently um gina's how i handle narcissists so that's fine um 
But then on the side, we see that um, Vicky, Shannon, and Jen, they're all talking about Tamara and how they're just over her and over the situation. And then as this is happening, um, Emily is lit on this party. She is just drinking. She was, she was kind of one of the first ones to actually show up. So she is lit. And she decides to confront and talk to Katie about the babysitting situation with Heather. Because Heather and her are just getting lit together. And honestly, I, I, it's, it's literally because they're arguing about their kids. I don't care. And I'm kind of over it. And, um, I don't really care about this Katie and, um, Heather situation like at all, actually, because I think that the ladies are dragging it, especially at this point, Heather's dragging it like, you know, once Katie let it go, let it go initially, um, which was a mistake that she even decided to do this this way. She really, Heather should let it go too, because it's just, it's, I don't care. Anyway. So next we have Tamara. She goes to talk to Jen next to try to clear the air with her and also try to prove to Jen that um, Shannon was also plotting and talking about um, Ryan and trying to get the background check. And Jen does not care. <laughs> Jen does not care. She kind of literally expresses she doesn't care. And in her confessional, um, Jen explains why. She's like, you know what? I do believe this. And even if Shannon was to do this, I don't care if Shannon was the one who helped orchestrate it, to be honest. Like, that's where Jen was at with it. She's like, I don't even care. The difference is when Shannon apologizes, I believe her and there's changed behavior. With Tamara, it's the same crap over and over again. So it, that's all for me. That's it. That's all for me. Because we have seen in previous seasons, it's not really about Jen not being a forgiving person. It's Jen not being dumb. It's like, <laughs> she's like, and I think that Tamara doesn't understand that just because a person is a forgiving person doesn't mean that they're dumb. And it's very clear to me she doesn't get that. And anyway, so then Tamara's like, as she's seeing her talking to Jen, she realizes that Jen is just not budging and not really buying it. Um, and and Jen's like kind of saying like, look, I'm not, I'm not really, I mean, I get that you are going to keep trying to do this, but like, whatever, I don't really care about it. Tamara's like, okay, I can leave. And I think she really thought Jen was like, don't leave. She was like, yeah, leave. <laughs> I was like, girl. <laughs> Oh, Jen whacking Tamara will forever be entertaining. And honestly, for that purpose alone, I want Tamara to stay on the show just because I love when Jen whacks her. And I want Gretchen to join the show. I know I keep saying it. Gretchen, if you do not come back on this show and join in with Jen as the dream team and keep, and keep whacking Tamara over and over again, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be upset um, because I can watch that for like, I can watch that the whole entire time. That is entertaining to me considering how vile and disgusting that Tamara has act acted throughout the years. Oh man. And also too, I don't feel like Gretchen never really got her revenge. So man, oh, that'd be great. But anyway, so that ends and really Tamara should have left right then and there, but she didn't leave yet. Um, and so the ladies, um, really, Emily's the one who's trying to make a group um, picture happen. They do do the group picture very, very quickly because really Shannon's making a whole entire big scene and deal about it because she doesn't really want to do the group picture because she's been avoiding Tamara the whole entire time because she wants nothing to do. She wants nothing to do with Tamara. Like, they did not end in a good note. She hasn't talked to her since they were in London. She doesn't want to talk to her. And so... Basically, they do do the group trip, group, group picture, and then Shannon immediately storms away. Tamara didn't have to say a word or nothing. She's like, nope, I want nothing to do with it. And so she's like threatening to leave. And then as she's threatening to leave, she goes to Matt, um, Katie's husband, and she's trying to like vent and talk to him about it. 
And Matt's like, you know, kind of being logical and not really thinking from a, the standpoint of Shannon, like, well, if you need to leave, then leave. And he's like, and she's like, wait, why are you saying it like that? And so they get in this weird, awkward back and forth um, with all this, which Shannon takes complete offense over. But we actually find out later on in the episode why Matt was the way he was. Because Matt was actually in the back of the party, really, really close to the exit. And there was a whole entire reason why that had nothing to do with any of these ladies in the room. It had to do with the fact that, um, yeah, someone else was there. And we will find out. It was just an Easter egg, basically. So Shannon the, then does decide to go back to the group. And by the group, it is really like um, Emily, Gina, and Katie. And Shannon does try to explain a little bit what was happening with um, to Katie about her husband. But then, then we hear this commotion that John Jansen's there. And by the way, uh, Tamara left after this. So Tamara wasn't around. Tamara and Eddie did the Irish goodbye and left, which was fine. And then they're making a big deal about John Jansen being there. And then this is where we see the, uh, sorry, I'm giving that reaction because another confessional of them too. And I don't care. I sped through it. Don't even care what they said. Don't know what they said. Anyway. So as this is happening, they're doing the whole like, um, end of the season wrap up where they basically show all the ladies and their updates in like a uh, Instagram story formats, kind of cute Shannon first. Then it is, um, it, then it's like, uh, Tamara, then it's, um, Heather, then, oh, I think Emily happened after Tam before Tamara, then, um, Tamara, then, um, uh, in, sorry, and then Heather, and then Katie, and then Gina, and a couple of other extra updates we found out was that um, Katie did not go on her trip yet to see her birth mom, but she's planning on doing that soon. We also find out that um, Gina um, is looking forward to like him, um, Travis, finally, hopefully finalizing the divorce so they can move forward in life. And I think that was really the only extra update that wasn't already there. Oh, and then Shannon's is finally starting to date, which we know that. So anyway. All right. So then they do another group picture and kind of they continue to party after like um, Alexis leaves. And this is then where um, the record scratches basically. Um, because Jen's doing a toast and they're, you know, congratulating her for her engagement. And then it is like three weeks later. Was it three weeks later? Yeah, three weeks later, the whole money laundering scandal comes out about Ryan's best friend and the Dodger player um, who just won the World Series, by the way. Congratulations to the Dodgers. Um, and uh, yeah, so the ladies are all reacting to it. And Jen and Ryan are jen's falling apart and ryan's like it's all part of god's plan no worries this that this and uh and long story less long jen is definitely standing by her man but she's just so confused on how she feels about the whole entire situation and um so we then see that emily tamra alexis and heather are literally gossiping about it they are not showing any concern when it comes to jen they're showing they're they're just being gossipy and rude. And then Tamara thinks she's eating eating when she decides she's going to have an FBI hat on and she's like, "Yeah, I should have wore this at the party." Just being so vile and disgusting and rude. But then we see the con the the side on uh, the other side of things where we see that Katie and Gina, they're also talking about it um in Katie's at Katie's house. But they actually show concern for Jen. They're like, you know what? At the end of the day, I just hope that Jen and the kids are good. And that's my concern. Everything else is a bonus. And so Jen does arrive at their house and she's literally consoling them and crying and very tearful. And they basically are showing their support of Jen. But they also do kind of give her a little bit of an intervention like, hey, 
you're going to need to have a plan B when it comes to this. Like you just, you don't want to completely rely on Ryan and Ryan only. Um, I know he's telling you all these great things. And then Jen's like, you know, Hey, when it came to my old relationship, I had a husband who just was not emotionally present. And now I actually have someone who is there for me emotionally and all the things that are not just like the um, physical standpoint of things. And so the fact that like there could be any form of portrayal, I just don't want to believe it. And she straight up says like, you know, Ryan's my best friend. And so they are, you know, they basically have Jen's back. It, it seems like that um, Gina and Katie does. And I love that Gina turned a corner and is supporting Jen because at the end of the day, Gina and Jen have way more in common than they did not. So I love that this is um, the corner that they turned. And I really wish Emily would turn this corner as well, but we see where she's at. But anyway, that is really where the episode ends. It was an overall great, great season. Um, great episode. And I am looking forward to this reunion. But anyway, I um, thank you for watching the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Mel Nostalgic Runner. And hopefully you enjoy re this review. And I will see you next time. Bye.